COVID-19, now a pandemic. Capitalism exacerbates crisis. This article was written by Gloria Lariva, presidential candidate of the Party for Socialism and Liberation, and was originally published on Liberation News. Lariva's running mate is native leader and political prisoner Leonard Peltier. With the rapidly deepening global spread of COVID-19, the World Health Organization of the United Nations declared a pandemic on March 11th. China's massive coordinated tackling of the virus has brought the disease under control there. In all of China, only 15 new cases of infected individuals were reported on March 11th, eight from Hubei province where the disease first began. It is an amazing feat made possible only by a centralized and determined government policy. Contrary to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's outright lie that China had hidden information on the virus, China made the virus's genome available to the world on January 10th so researchers could work to develop a vaccine. This was three days after the virus was identified. But in the United States, the opposite is taking place. With non-existent national health care, cuts in social services, workers with no guaranteed paid sick or vacation pay, and the severe shortage of testing kits to quickly identify and isolate people who test positive, a potential catastrophe is looming. There is absolutely no national plan of any kind. On March 11th, Trump appeared on national TV to speak of emergency measures. Up to now, he had downplayed the seriousness of the virus, claiming it to be similar to the flu. But the flu mortality average is 0.1%, while the COVID-19 mortality rate is as high as 3% in many cases. Relief lines for capitalists only. Trump said he would ask Congress to aid workers who are quarantined, but without providing specifics. He called for the Small Business Administration to provide capital and liquidity for those in, quote, affected states, and called on Congress to provide payroll tax relief for corporations. On March 10th, after meeting with the executives of Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup at the White House, the Trump administration floated the idea of $700 billion in payroll tax cuts. This new tax break would be on top of the trillion-dollar cut signed by Trump into law in 2017. That law dropped the previous top tax for the highest profiting U.S. corporations from 35% in 2016 to an abysmal 11% paid last year by corporate giants. Slashing conglomerates' taxes means major cuts in social services and a greater tax burden on the working class and poor. COVID-19 and the latest stock market crash reveals the capitalist system in its most brutal form. The capitalists cause the financial crisis with their banking and stock market speculation. But when they fail and get, quote, rescued, the people pay in foreclosures, in evictions, in layoffs, and in greater poverty. Although the Democratic Party leadership is countering Trump's proposal by calling for $40 billion in emergency relief, much more is needed financially and with state of emergency declarations. Otherwise, if homeless people are exposed without care, seniors isolated while staff is reduced, tenants evicted, and homeowners foreclosed only to face a permanent state of destitution, huge numbers of people could die without proper care. Real, effective, compassionate action is needed now. Fight the virus, not the people. The emergency decrees and executive orders of federal, state, and local governments are not addressing the real needs to combat the disease and help the people. Tens of millions are already one paycheck away from destitution and homelessness. Without sweeping economic measures, a catastrophe of monumental proportions stands to affect tens of millions of people. As it stands, people across the United States are left to fend for themselves. Universities are closing down and evicting students from their dorms. Mass layoffs are already happening, in addition to workplaces being transferred to the home. Many workers are sent home with no pay. Schools are closed and parents are scrambling for childcare. 
The United States has enormous productive capacity to resolve every human being's needs in the country, including employment, housing, health care, education, child care, secure retirement, a complete overhaul of infrastructure, culture, and overall well-being. Literally every person could enjoy a full life. What stands in the way is the system of private ownership. Under capitalism, every essential need for life is in the hands of the capitalists, who only produce if they can make a profit. And yet, it is the working class that produces all the wealth. With socialism, instead of profits as the motive force of society, the common ownership and distribution of wealth allows the working class to run society for the good of all. Today, the virus crisis requires emergency measures of national proportions. How will it all be paid for? By rescinding the trillion dollar tax giveaway to the rich. Use that wealth, shut down the Pentagon budget, and fight the virus and protect the people people, both at home and abroad. The Party for Socialism and Liberation and the Lariva Peltier presidential campaign calls for an immediate emergency program to combat the virus. 1. Mass-produce COVID-19 test kits. 2. Provide free testing in newly created health centers for the whole population and identify the circle of people who are possibly exposed to isolate and minimize the spread. 3. Full funding and staffing of public health departments. Full staffing of medical health providers in schools. 4. Provide protective equipment, training, breaks, and premium pay for hazardous work for all medical workers, EMTs, firefighters, and home care aides. 5. Require employers to meet with and defer to frontline health care workers on decisions relating to staffing, health, and safety. 6. An emergency order for full pay and benefits if someone is not able to work due to the crisis, including but not limited to closures, cancellations, cut hours, quarantine, illness or caring for ill persons, and so on. Implement an immediate $15 per hour minimum wage, including for workers who depend on tips. 7. Enact a moratorium on all evictions and rent increases during the epidemic. Ban all foreclosures, including for small businesses. Bail out the people and not the banks. Expedite and extend unemployment. 8. No ICE or immigration deportations or raids. Close the ICE jails, free the children and parents, and unite the families. 9. And mass incarceration. Vastly increase medical staff and care in all prisons and jails. Compassionate release for elder prisoners, as seniors are the most vulnerable to COVID-19 virus. 10. Fine price gougers and profiteers and reimburse all victims. 11. Full funding for inspectors of nursing homes, long-term care facilities, and senior centers to assure healthy and safe conditions for residents. Hire a massive workforce to survey seniors going door to door to ensure they are safe and getting proper care. 12. Guarantee multilingual staff in health and social services in as many languages as exist in the communities. 13. Use the power of eminent domain to house homeless people in overcrowded households in existing vacant housing units in good condition. There are 17 million empty homes in the U.S. and 500,000 estimated homeless. 14. If universities and other schools empty the dorms, the school must provide students alternate housing, food, and health care. 15. Start a massive public education campaign in the media to prevent the spread of illness and promote a proactive education to oppose stigma, xenophobia, and racism. 16. Open all clinics and hospitals. Treat all, regardless of ability to pay. Ensure massive funding for the hospitals and clinics to improve facilities and open up closed hospitals. 17. Increase funding for underserved communities, particularly in rural areas, on native reservations, in African-American, Latino, Asian, and white low-income communities. 18. Enact a federal emergency order, paid sick leave at 100% for companies larger than 50 workers. For smaller companies, federal funding to help finance sick leave. National sick leave and vacation must be guaranteed. 19. Double the monthly amount of food stamps to families and individuals, including those who currently don't receive any. No cuts and no work requirements attached. 20. No utility shutoffs regardless of weather, including water, electricity, gas, telephones, and internet. Deliver heating fuel to those in need. 21. 
provide federal emergency funding to rescue the defined benefit pension plans, which are now in danger of collapse due to the stock market crash. And 22, end the U.S. blockades and sanctions against Cuba, Venezuela, Iran, North Korea, and all countries that are sanctioned. They need access to medical supplies and medicines that are currently blocked by the U.S. government. Cuba has a highly effective medicine called interferon that has saved lives affected by COVID-19 in China. Worldwide, international cooperation is critical. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to learn more about the Party for Socialism and Liberation, please visit our website at liberationnews.org or find us on social media at PSLweb. Learn more about the Lariva Peltier campaign at larivapeltier2020.org. That's Lariva, P-E-L-T-I-E-R, 2020.org. Or find us on Twitter at Lariva Peltier.